We're going to see how to take an existing backstage front-end plugin and create a dynamic wrapper plugin on top of it and finally integrate that with Red Hat Developer Hub. To start with, let's go to backstage.io slash plugins to see the list of all available plugins. And in here, we can see a plugin, a front-end plugin, which is called DevCodes. And this plugin provides the capability to show programming-related codes. So let's explore this plugin. Looking at the documentation of this plugin, we can see that it has already been published to the NPM registry with this reference. And also it provides a component which is called dev code in order to show up the programming related code. To start with, let's copy the reference to this plugin and use it to create our dynamic wrapper plugin. Let's go to Visual Studio Code and create a NPM project called RH1 dev code plugin. And within the SRC location, let's create an index.ts and export all the components that are provided by that third-party plugin. Then let's move on to package.json and add relevant sections. First, let's add backstage role with a value of role to be front-end plugin. Then let's add the set of all dependencies that are required for this plugin. First, let's add the, ref the dependency to the third-party plugin that we are going to wrap in this plugin, and then the other dependencies to React and React DOM. Then let's add the dev dependencies section and include the references to Backstage CLI as well as the JNS IDP CLI. So we will be using these two CLIs in order to build as well as export this plugin as a dynamic plugin. So the scripts section of package.json should also be updated to include the build as well as export dynamic scripts. Then let's add the files section and include the references to the locations dist as well as dist dash scalprom. And finally, let's add the scalprom section and include the name of the plugin as well as the exposed modules that are going to be provided by this plugin. In this case, it's going to be just only one module that is going to be referenced by index.ts. And the name of the plugin is almost exactly the same as the name of the package, of course, without the at symbol, as well as the slash forward slash has been replaced with a dot over here. With that, let's go ahead and install the dependencies and uh, compile the package. But before we do that, let's take a look at the TypeScript config and in here, an important attribute called out there has to be updated to point to dist-types-src because this is the location where the backstage CLI would be looking for the .d.ts file to be available as part of the build. So this has to be updated to point to this location. With that, let's go ahead and install the dependencies. Now let's compile the package. Let's trigger the build for the package. And yarn build will internally use the backstage CLI in order to do the build as we can see here. And finally, let's export this plugin as a dynamic plugin. And for that, let's use the export dynamic script that we had added to the package.json. And as we can see, it internally invokes the JNS CLI, package export dynamic plugin command, and it internally expects uh, appconfig.yaml to be available as part of the plugin. So let's add uh, appconfig.yaml and include the mandatory parameters that are expected in an app config 
.yaml. With that definition, let's go ahead and re-execute the export dynamic script. With this, our plugin has been exported as a dynamic plugin. Now the next step would be to publish this plugin to a NPM registry. So let's publish this plugin with the version 0.2.5 and the plugin has been published. With that, let's go ahead and include the plugin configurations to the Red Hat Developer Hub. So for this demonstration, we already have an instance of Red Hat Developer Hub that is deployed in OpenShift using help charts. So let's just update this instance with the relevant plugin configuration. Before we do that, let's take a look at the current portal, Developer Hub portal and see what are the catalog components that are available and what is the specific page within this catalog component that we will be updating with the reference to the third party plugin that has been exported as a dynamic wrapper plugin. Now here we have a component, catalog component, which is called Red Hat One Dynamic Frontend Wrapper. And if we go in there under the overview section, we have two subsections. One is links and the other one is about and the right side of this page is, is currently blank. And this is the part of the page where we will be integrating the dynamic wrapper plugin, which in turn contains the third party plugin that will show up a code. So let's go back to the Helm chart. And if we look at the Helm chart, we can see that under the global dynamic plugin section, it's currently empty, which means there are no dynamic plugins that are, in, that are currently included as part of this setup. Let's go ahead and define the plugin configuration and, and then copy that and paste it over here. So as part of the plugin configuration, the first and the foremost attribute that needs to be included is the package reference. So this should be pointing to the specific reference to the dynamic wrapper plugin that we have already published to the NPM registry. And then it should also, the configuration should also contain the reference to the integrity of that specific package. So in order to get the integrity information of this package, let's go and execute the NPM info command and the info command will provide the integrity of this particular package. So this can be copied and it can be updated in this config file. And next part of the config is to include the plugin configuration where the front end dynamic plugin configuration should be referring to the name of the dynamic wrapper plugin. So the name of the dynamic wrapper plugin is something that we have already defined as part of our package.json. So in the package.json, we have provided the name of the plugin. So that's available here. So this can be copied from here and referenced here. Then comes the mount points. Red Hat Developer Hub provides mount points in order to extend the existing pages with additional content. So the developer hub has a set of predefined mount points. And in this demonstration, we are going to update or use the mount point that is associated with the overview page of the catalog component. And we are going to include in this mount point, the reference to dev code component, which is provided by the third party plugin. So the import name should be referencing that specific component. And finally, the location within the page where this component needs to be rendered is specified using the layout configuration. And finally, we, we have the option to provide dynamic routes. 
Now, once again, Red Hat Developer Hub provides the ability to include additional sidebar navigation in the portal, in the left part of the portal, and that could be done by defining the menu item text and linking up the specific component with the attribute called import name. And finally, the path where this dynamic route is going to be available. Now, let's copy this configuration and update the Helm chart with this plugin information, plugin configuration information. And let's trigger the upgrade. So this will trigger a rollout and because of the rolling update strategy, a new pod will be created. So before the new pod gets created, let's once again go back to the developer hub portal and take a look at our catalog item. So, and what we are expecting after the new rollout is complete is to see programming related codes in this section of the overview page. Because this is the specific page or the mount point where we have defined the linkage to this third party plugin. All right, now that the new pod has been created, let's go ahead and refresh the developer hub. And with that, we can see that the data that's coming from the third party plugin has been integrated here with the help of our dynamic wrapper plugin that we created. And also the sidebar navigation that we have configured using the help of uh, dynamic routes can be seen that it is displayed here. Clicking that is going to show up another code and that's shown here as part of the right side panel. And once again, if we go back to the catalog, we see that a new code is displayed as part of the overview page. This concludes the demonstration.